Hello, this is part three of business activity and the exciting topics go on further because I'm going to talk today about legal structures for business and how we actually set up that business and in the eyes of the law. Um, and a lot of it focuses on who is responsible for debt that the business might have. Um, and that's to do with liability, which means responsibility. So if the business fails or has problems, businesses either have unlimited or limited liability. And hopefully you understand that before we carry on. So if I just want to set up a business tomorrow and it's just me and I know what I'm doing and say I am making, I don't know, hair clips. And I think, right, I'm going to sell these online, I'm going to sell them on eBay. I can set up, I have to keep records. Every business has to keep records, financial records. I have to keep a track of what's coming in and what's going out. Um, and I can employ people to help me out. And I have to pay taxes on the income. So that's the same for all businesses. So say I'm going to set up tomorrow, going to start selling on eBay. I would be self-employed. That's what I'm classed as. I'm a sole trader and I get up and running straight away. It's dead quick. You can get on with it and off you go. The profits go into my bank account. It's mine. Obviously, I have to, still have to pay income tax, as I said. And off I go. Um, the downside of this is, say the business fails and I owe money to people, that's my debt. So... I am responsible for that debt and those people could send bailiffs or debt collectors to my home and they could take my things to pay for that debt if I can't cover it with cash myself. If I've got a friend or a couple of friends that we want to set up a business together then that's called a partnership and of course that's quite good because we can share our um, how much money we put into the business and we can share ideas. It could be a problem because there might be fallouts um, if we don't agree quite on how the business is going to run. And um, the other thing about a partnership is it's got unlimited liability, just like a sole trader, which means that if the business fails, if the partnership fails, then we are responsible for the debt personally. And those um, people we owe the money to can send in the bailiffs who can come and take the money from us for possessions to the value of that. So the unlimited liability is the thing you need to remember about sole traders and partnerships. However, if I want to make my business sound more professional, um, maybe if I wanted to get a bank loan or something like that, or I want people, to, other companies to do business with me, it's worth thinking about setting up a limited company. There are two types of limited company. When you start off, you're going to set up a private limited company in which you're going to have shareholders. But this could be as much as you and your mum. And you say to your mum, can you put a pound in and you're a shareholder? Because you have to have at least... Uh, two shareholders and the shareholders are the, the owners of the business and all the information gets sent off to a central place called company's house that's looked after by the government and your names are there and your addresses and your company will have a registered office and it's all quite official it doesn't cost a huge amount it costs I think it well, it used to be about 40 pounds so it's not a horrendous thing to do you have to send your accounts in every year and you might need an accountant to do that for you so that's going to increase your costs as a business um, and you have to have a meeting every year called the annual general meeting so the main thing that you have to remember about a private limited company or a public limited company is that they are both legally separate from you as the business owners so the business owners the shareholders are not responsible for any debt if the business fails then anybody who is um, owed money has to go after the business for the money and if the business doesn't have that money they can't come after you as the business owners and that's the big difference with having a private or a public limited company compared to a sole trader or a partnership. Now a private limited company is called private because it's selling the shares privately to um, family or friends maybe you've got control of who buys them whereas a public limited company you sell the shares publicly so you don't get to control who actually can buy your shares. And obviously it's that issue about control and selling shares publicly that makes a public limited company different to a private limited company. The other thing you need to remember um, about setting up a PLC or a limited company is the names for them. And students often quite understandably get a bit confused. A private limited company where you're selling the shares privately to people you know is a limited company so it would be called Hearst and Hearst Limited LTD and that's what that LTD stands for even though written down it says private limited company so then you think oh yeah PLC no 
wrong. Private limited company, the abbreviation is limited, LTD. Whereas the abbreviation for public limited company, public limited company is PLC. So think about next PLC or Marks and Spencer's PLC. They sell shares publicly. You or I could go out and buy those shares. And that's the difference between LTD and PLC. LTD is private limited company and PLC is public limited company. So try and learn that as well to stop confusion.